All right, we're going to shout hallelujah. Let's do it together on the count of three and let's send it around the world. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Amen. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for blessing us, blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God. Go ahead and clap for the Lord. Amen. He's worthy. All right. Well, um, get your Bibles out. It's, it's Wednesday night and we're going to get right into this. And God's always got stuff for us. And if, if you make a decision to win, what do you think you're going to do? OK, so we talked about that on when I mean, uh, Sunday, that's a decision. You know, you got to get up in the morning and say, I'm going to win. So before anything comes at you, before you even really consider what you got to do, you got to decide what's going to happen. And so us making a commitment to the word like we do here at this church is helping you to win, because it's one thing to talk about winning. Amen. But it's another thing to prepare yourself for victory. You got to prepare yourself for victory. A lot of people can say, I'm going to win, I'm going to win. But if they don't do anything, they're going to lose because that's just the way it works. Amen. And so we've been preaching this series, Confessing the Word. Uh, and we're going to preach Confessing the Word Part 7. So this has been, you know, this has been somewhat of a extensive series here or you know, he was kind of tracking this uh, dominate life that we're doing on Sundays. But I'm just going to keep preaching because there's so much. And I think these are uh, things that are important for us to have as concrete foundation. You know, you got to have these things so you can build on it. So confessing the word part seven. I want to talk tonight about proactive declarations, proactive declarations. Uh and so, um, did I already pray? Yeah, I did pray, right? Okay, good. All right. Uh, proactive declaration. So proactive, you know, you have to learn to be uh, preventative, right? You've heard of uh, the term preventative medicine. So you don't want to get yourself in a situation where everything has now gone wrong and now you're trying to, you know, oh man, now... See, and that's the unfortunate reality that we deal with. A lot of people don't deal with stuff until the alarm goes off. OK, it's a problem. It's a problem. And so then now they say, well, I better change my diet. Well, the truth is you should have changed the diet before the problem came. Come on, somebody. Should that, now, I believe the Holy Ghost will help you. He'll give you this insight. But sometimes people's ears are clogged. They don't want to hear until they have to hear. Amen. When they're forced to hear, then they, oh, OK. Well, this is the same way with the word of God. When I'm talking about proactive declarations, you can't wait until everything is going wrong and then you start trying to confess. It's going to be a lot harder for you. It's going to be tougher. And so uh, my job as a pastor is to teach you these things. And then prayerfully, you start to listen. And you say, OK, I'm going to start applying these things. And then now you're better prepared and you'll be surprised at how many things are not allowed to get on you because you have activated some of these biblical principles that that I'm teaching you. So proactive, that's going to be ahead of time. That's preventative. That's not uh, reactive. Reactive is like, oh, man, the doctor gave me a diagnosis that I didn't want to hear. So let me get some confessions. You can do that. But how many know you're going to have to advance this thing? You got to graduate. You can't be waiting because how many of y'all want to be kept out of the doctor? Come on, somebody. How many of you want to be kept away from the, the negative diagnosis? Amen. Well, I'm teaching you stuff that is preventative and it will keep you walking in this abundant health. And so proactive declaration. So a declaration, what is that? A positive, explicit or formal statement. 
a proclamation. Now the word explicit, I know that, you know, sometimes they use that to label something that has adult language and all that, but there's other meanings to that word explicit. The word explicit also means fully or clearly expressed or demonstrated, leaving nothing merely implied. And so sometimes Christians don't understand their responsibility. You cannot uh, just expect, you can't leave anything, uh, like it says, leaving nothing merely implied. So, you know, people just assume, you know what I mean? They're, they're Christians and they just assume certain things. Well, I'm a Christian, so, you know, uh, certain things are just going to work out. No, they're not. You can't assume that. There's something that you're going to have to do. And so fully or clearly expressed. I mean, you got to fully and clearly express the kind of life you want to live. You can't just hope it shows up. You've got to fully express it. And so uh, also, once again, that declaration, a positive or formal statement, a proclamation, a proclamation. This has to be verbalized. Amen. This has to be verbalized. This cannot just be something that you want or you hope that is going to happen one day. You have to get into this practice of making statements from your mouth. Amen. And I'm going to I'm going to teach you through some of this tonight. And so let's go to Romans, Romans 4, 17. Now, we know this. This is speaking of God. Uh, a lot of this tonight will be King James. But I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the power of this. Because. Um, a lot of this is King James, because I'm, I'm teaching you guys just out of stuff that I've, you know, uh, developed over the years and stuff that is, is daily practice type stuff for me. And so when it comes to scripture, you know, memorizing the scripture for me, it's always King James. Now, I teach out of these other versions to give us greater understanding. But when it comes to memorizing it to where I can shoot it like a machine gun, whenever I shoot it like a machine gun, it's going to be King James because that's just, you know, how it happened for me. But whatever your version may be that you choose to use to memorize. Now, you can't memorize all of them. You're going to set yourself up for failure. You say, I want to just memorize, you know, this in the message and also in the NLT and all. Just pick one that you can lock in. And that way you'll have it on ready recall. Amen. All right. So Romans 4, 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before. He's speaking of Abraham. Before him who believed, he believed even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not what? As they were. So look at these words. Calleth those things. Calleth. You think. Have any of you ever made a phone call without talking? Come on, somebody. You can't make a phone call without talking. You have to say something. Right. And so call it, this is speaking, call it those things which be not. And so even if it's not that way right now, you got to learn to call it, but then you don't call it like it's going to show up one day. You call it as if it were. That's the way God, you know, when God said, let there be light, he wasn't speaking of light as it could possibly happen. He spoke light as it's going to happen right now because it already exists. Come on, somebody. When you start, when you catch a revelation of the fact that I'm already healed so I can call it. Come on. I'm not calling something that does not exist. Come on. When you get a revelation of the fact that, oh, my healing is already done. So let me call it on into today. Come on. It's out there on ice. Let me just call it into my now. Come on. And so. If we understand this and say, oh, this is the way God acts. He speaks those things that are not as if they were. It, you, you, once again, you cannot be waiting till something bad happens and then you start trying to speak uh, against it. That's reactive. Amen. I'm teaching about proactive. Look at your name and say proactive. OK. All right. So we have the power to speak into our future. Amen. We have the power to speak into our future. How many of y'all know that? You can speak into your future. As a matter of fact, uh, I think it's, well, I don't know if it's Mark 4, 14, somewhere around there, but the sower sows the word. And so you have the ability to sow the word into your future. Well, a lot of times your now is just 
what you have sown into in past time. Right. And so if you spoke words in years gone by, sometimes people don't realize that they're actually showing up. They're stepping into what they prophesied over themselves. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all don't. I know it's Wednesday and I know, you know, we got uh, these schedules and people get all busy and all that type of stuff. I'm going to tell you something, too, about these schedules. You start speaking it into the box you want it to be in. It'll conform. It will conform. Your schedule will conform to your words. If you don't put it out there, you don't put no words out there to control and, and bat, make that schedule bow to never bow. Amen. And so. When we start talking about this ability to speak into our future, that's why I'm always, you know, encouraging you guys. Don't speak things that you don't want to show up. Don't speak. I'm tired. Don't speak. I'm getting old. Oh, I'm, I'm getting old now. Well, people that's been speaking, I'm getting old. Guess what? They old now. And that body's responding. It's responding according to what you spoke. Nothing shows up on you today that you didn't call forth yesterday. You called it forth. You just might not remember. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so I want you calling forth good things. I want you to start to speak and prophesy the good and start calling the good into your life. That way you start walking into it. And so once again, we have the power to speak into our future. But. See, that's this is important. So but we must be strong in faith. We must be strong in faith. A lot of people have trouble understanding faith. Well, you've got to you got to get not only do you have to get past understanding it, but you have to become strong in faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You have to be a person of faith. You have to be strong in faith to where you could see some stuff that maybe other people don't see. Come on, somebody. You could see a victory that nobody else sees because their faith is not the same as yours. But because now if your faith is strong, then it's going to cause you to be proactive. And you start talking. Sometimes people think you're out of touch with reality. You are. You don't need to be in touch with reality. We need to be changing our reality. It's not about us being um, sensible and being in touch with, you know, this reality. It's about us understanding what God is doing and then being able to be lifted and him opening your eyes. And so now you can see what he sees, but others don't see it, but you see it. And so what are you doing? Walking by faith. Come on, somebody. And not by sight. See what I'm saying? Now. We could speak into our future, but we've got to be strong in faith. Look at your name. Say, I'm strong in faith. OK, Romans 4, 19. Let's look at this one. 19 through 21. King James and being not weak in faith. So Abraham was not weak in faith. If your faith is weak, you're not going to accomplish much. And so and we know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and all this type of stuff. But I want to uh, show you some things here because we are the seed of Abraham. Right. We always reference this Galatians three twenty nine. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And also Galatians, I think it's um, three verse nine. It starts talking about uh if we are of faith, then we are blessed with faithful Abraham. Amen. And so that's just letting us know how we inherit this blessing. Well, let's look at what the Bible is speaking in regards to Abraham's faith and being not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. So what is this? God is telling him something great, but he did not disqualify himself based upon what he saw in the natural. Come on. God could want to do something great with your life, but you can disqualify yourself because you're looking at the yet the, the now or the 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 condition you may be in or whatever. And that becomes a yeah, but. And so God says he wants to do something great, but then you have a yeah, but he wants to do something great through your life or maybe uh, man use you to, you know, develop great finances or something. But then you say. Yeah, but see, I don't have the education. Or I don't have the money. I don't have this. I don't have that. 
Well, that is what you may see with the natural eye. And so Abraham was not weak in faith. So when we disqualify ourselves based upon our current circumstances or situations, what is that? Y'all you want me to tell you? We are weak in faith. Come on, somebody. When you disqualify yourself based upon your current uh, situation, then you're weak in faith. And see, you can't be like that. You've got to be able to look beyond. And so Abraham was not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. And so when God starts talking to you about great things, don't consider See, when he tells me that this word is going around the world or when I say let's send this hallelujah around the world, I'm not even considering where we are. Come on, somebody. I'm not even considering the camera equipment that we have. Y'all in here with me. Come on. I'm considering something much greater. And then when I started to do that, I started to see God move and he started to give me evidence that what I was speaking was going to come to pass. You see what I'm saying? But you cannot be moved by, oh, man, here we are over here in Marietta or whatever. No, you, you're not. We're not limited. And we've got to be. I've been doing this in front of you guys for a long time. And many of you have been around here. And so you've seen things change. You've seen some ups and downs and all this stuff, maybe with people here, people not here or whatever. But you've seen consistency from the pulpit. Why is that? How can I be consistent? I've even been so uh, consistent to where it's almost been to a detriment to myself because I wouldn't change based on the times we're in. And a lot of people, they want you to change and flow with the times you're in. No, no, we change. We don't jump into the world's flow. We're in the kingdom flow. And so in the kingdom flow, we don't change just because the weather is different or uh, uh, there's different sicknesses out there. We don't change. Now, that can become offensive to people. But listen, I'm always going to encourage you to step into greater power. Doesn't matter what's going on. I'm never going to be one that gives you enough sympathy to make you feel comfortable in the problem that you're in. I'm going to help you get out of it, but it's not going to be just by, you know, coddling you. It's going to be through, oh no, get this word and use this word to get yourself into a different situation. That's the way this works. And so Abraham was not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. So meaning he's, he's old. So what God is telling him, he had no way of doing it in the natural. That's why he didn't consider that. See, that's why you got to stop wasting time. You got to stop wasting time considering if God tells me the, the ministry is going to be global, I cannot consider, well, but, but, but God, we only have this many members. God is like, what's that got to do with me? That has nothing to do with me. And he proved that to me. And he started to show me on different reports how Different people from different countries are tuning in. Well, just from this little setup here, there is no little setup with God. See, when you're on when you're doing things in the kingdom and the kingdom way, nothing's little about it. And so you've got to recognize that. So I'm trying to help you to understand that even your words, there's nothing little about your words. You may say it and you may say it out of frustration. Well, there's one thing we can do. We can try to not do the wrong thing. So we try to stop speaking this or that. But how I many know oh, you got to graduate from there? You got to step up to where I'm going to start to use this prophetic power that God has placed in my mouth. I'm not going to shy away from it anymore. And even if you may feel like, how can I speak such big things when I'm in such a small place right now? Well, what about Abraham? And when we say you're Abraham's seed, what was he doing? He was speaking some big stuff from a small place. So you mean I'm going to be the father of many nations, but I'm already 100 and I have no kids. And my wife is barren. But I'm supposed to be the father of many nations. Well, you got to agree with God and speak those things that are come on, y'all, not 
as if they were. If Abraham could catch a revelation of that and speak that God is going to bless me to be the father of many nations, my wife's going to have a kid even to the point where the wife laughed at him. Then how many know you could speak to your body? Your body might not feel right, but you can speak something different on it because you have the power to change your situation through the words you speak from your mouth. Amen. But you cannot be weak in faith. And so once again, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. But look at this. He staggered not. Look at your name and say, stop staggering. Oh, people say they have faith in God, but they stagger all day long. Mm -hmm. See, because they're considering they got that. Yeah, but mm -hmm. God's telling them to speak something big. And they say, well, ain't no well. See, that's a stagger. When you stagger, you miss out. This thing is happening so fast and you can't pause. When you pause, now you just gave the enemy a chance. Yeah. And so once you realize that this is a fight for your life, Amen. if you are in a fight for your life, and if you knew that you, if you let off for a second, you'd be choked out. Yes. How many know you would fight yes. until you had no more energy? Yes. You, would, you would go out fighting. But people tend to think that they have time. Yes. They have time to mope. Mm -hmm. They have time to have down days. They have time to go through the funk. Got a little cloud on me. Oh, you think you got time for that cloud? We don't have time. Amen. And so I'm going to I'm going to continue to show you. And I'm giving you a foundation so that, you know, you have the power to speak like this because of where you come from and who you're connected to. And so he staggered not at the promise of God through what causes you to stagger. That's a yeah, but. You said you don't believe God says you can be healed. And you say, well, yeah, but. I don't know about that. Well, you need to know. That's why you need to keep coming to church. You need to learn so that you be convinced that what God says is what goes. That's all that matters is what God says. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was what was he? Strong. What kind of faith did he have? Strong. strong. He was strong in faith, giving what? Glory to God. Some people, they'll be like, oh, glory to God. Don't be saying that if you're not walking by faith. Right. Come on, that, that ain't nothing but a cliche to you. Oh, glory to God, but you don't even believe. You doubting on every turn. What you talking about, glory to God? You give glory to God through your actions. Amen. Amen. And so, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. This is what Abraham was doing. And so now, what do you do? He, I'm going to show you this, this 20, verse 20 says, he staggered not, go back. Uh, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So he was he staggered not, but he staggered not at the promise. So we're going to put an emphasis on the promise in a minute. Now go to this next verse, this 21. And being fully persuaded. Hmm? Come on. Ask yourself, are you fully persuaded? Amen. Or are you, are you still trying to be convinced? Mm -hmm. See, that, that's what happens, you know. Uh, people are still trying to, okay, you know, I can preach all these messages, man. I've preached, oh gosh, thousands of messages. And it's the same theme. It's the same theme. Ain't, ain't much change because we're a faith ministry. So it always keeps coming back around. And there are people that have heard almost everything I've preached. But some people are still trying to be convinced. It's like at some point you got to just stop trying to be convinced and just accept it as truth. And so being fully persuaded that what he had promised. So you're fully persuaded that what God promised, he was able to perform. Now, here's what I got to help you understand. Uh, I'm teaching a little bit of this in that uh, Dominate Life series. But in the world, it's about what you do. And so people are if, if you weren't Christians and you weren't in, in, in this type of teaching and all that, then, yeah, you, it's got to be what you think you can do. And sometimes people's self-confidence gets in the way, takes them a little time to build up that self-confidence, all that type of stuff. Ain't no self-confidence in what I'm teaching you. Abraham didn't have self-confidence. 
He was fully persuaded that what he had promised, what God promised, that's what ha needs to happen to you. You need to be fully persuaded that what God promised. Now, God doesn't promise something and expect you to do it. Oh, come on, y'all. He's not going to promise it and then expect you to do it. See, that's people. They're doing that. God promises healing. And so what happens? People find a way to heal themselves. No, come on now. Let me help you. Because it ain't going to it ain't going to come all the all the time the way you think. Sometimes people now ain't nothing wrong with changing your diet and all that type of stuff. I'm not against that. But what I'm saying is if God promises that he's your healer. Then he going to heal you. Now, I know that we've heard it said that, well, you know, sometimes your healing comes in the form of information. Yeah, that can happen. But I'm telling you about Abraham. There was no books that Abraham could read. To show him how to be, you know, be able to get Sarah pregnant. There was no there was no lifestyle change for Abraham. So Abraham, you're going to change your life. You need to, you know, whatever. There was nothing he could change for that. It was going to be supernatural. And he believed that God was going to be the one that would perform it. How many of when you are fully persuaded, you say, oh, no, I, I'm fully persuaded. This is on God. Y'all in here with me? No, God's going to do it because God promised it. I mean, no, he's not a man that he would lie. And so but now what you've got to do is you got you're going to be you. You want to become fully persu persuaded. But before that can happen, you got to find out what did he promise? Come on, y'all. What did he promise? A lot of people don't know what what did God promise? Now. All of the promises of God are yes and amen. amen. But what are all those promises? And so we've got to be at that place in our lives where we say, OK, let me find out what God has promised. And then what do I have to do? I got to speak it. Amen. Find out what he's promised and then speak it. Here's what you can't do. I'm going to give you I'm giving you practical application here. You can't just meditate it. Too many Christians are quiet. You know why they're quiet? They're not comfortable in who they are. And so they're quiet. And so it like this whole thing th that I'm teaching is is just not always comfortable for people. So when I, I'm going to get into this in a minute as to how your confessions work, it's not the most comfortable to be talking when no one else is there. Come on, y'all. That, that you, it takes practice. You got it. But this is not normal. This is not a normal way. And so typically when people pray, that's OK. You can pray and you can be quiet in that prayer. But there's a time where there's some speaking out Amen. and this speaking out is not. Well, Lord, I just want to talk to you. And uh, I was just thinking, Lord, and, and you can do that. But that ain't powerful. Mm -hmm. That ain't what I'm talking about. You can do that in your head. Mm -hmm. God, because God already knows what you talk. He don't need you to talk to him like that. If you got questions like that and you're like, Lord, I just don't. You could just have that going on in your head. But you got to verbalize these promises. Amen. Come on, somebody. You've got to speak these promises. So you got to understand that we live. Uh, we, you got to be able to pay attention and recognize the laws of the universe. This universe is not new age. This universe is what God created. And you've got to understand the laws of the universe. Well, first you understand the laws of the kingdom, which um, override the laws of this lower universe that we're in. And so if you understand this, you realize that I got to find out what the promises are, but then I, j I can't just meditate it. So what do I mean by this? Sometimes people will read a scripture, but they never say nothing. They just read it. So that's good. I read my verses today. Praise the Lord. How many did you speak? Oh, come on. Uh, well, I read my, you know, I read my, I did my daily devotion today. But how much talking did you do? See, y'all in here with me? See, I, I'm teaching you because, yeah, you could be a good Christian. But if you just wanted to be a good Christian, you wouldn't be listening to me. There ain't nobody going to listen to me that just wants to be a good Christian. You're only listening to me because you want to go higher. 
You're only listening to me because you want to step your game up and you want to start to operate in a, a, a place of life where you can truly dominate it. That's the only reason anybody listens to me. And so I got to teach you. No, that's a good Christian. Good Christians just sit down and pray. Praise the Lord. And they they said their prayers and, and they all good. And then they go on and gone about their day. But what did you say? Oh, you ain't saying nothing. Well, if you ain't saying nothing. You ain't getting nothing. Come on. In the world, even the world says closed mouths don't get fed. Amen. So we used to say that when you better speak up. If you want some ask. Don't just hope for it. Well, find out what God has promised, then speak it. So how do I, well, I'm just not comfortable speaking, Pastor. Well, you're not comfortable getting blessed. Y'all don't want me to. That's just the way it is. Well, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm a little more reserved and I'm just a little more. OK. But the times we're coming in now, you're not going to get your stuff. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm telling you, man, I've been doing this for years and I've been teaching this for years and I still got people that don't do it. But what we're doing now is we're coming into a time now is you're going to be without Because people are not quiet on everything. They just get quiet when it comes to the word. Now, you got to know that the devil's involved with this. If you have no problem speaking about other things, but you're quiet when it comes to the word. Who's doing that? Huh? Now, if you just told me, Pastor, I don't talk at all. I don't talk. I don't do any talking. Then I'll pray for you for that. But there ain't there's no person that does not talk. Amen. And people tend to talk more about things they know. And things that they're they feel qualified to speak on. So that's why I teach you the word the way I do. So that you can be qualified to speak on it. Amen? Amen. And so find out what God's promised, then speak it. Once again, you just you can't just meditate it or pray it. You have to speak it. Now, there is a sound that must be released into this atmosphere. Amen. There is a sound that must be released into this atmosphere. Otherwise, God would have never said, let there be light. He would have thought it. Because he's God, he's powerful enough, he could have just thought it. Why did it say he said? Because that's letting you know that there is a sound that must be released into this atmosphere. The atmosphere doesn't respond to your thoughts. Come on. Now, don't be confused because there's people that say, oh, you know, like Napoleon Hill wrote the book, You Think and Grow Rich. There's also all this positive thinking that you can do. But that positive thinking impacts you. Come on. It does not impact the atmosphere around you. Come on. You can think that storm is not coming over here. But that storm will be over here. But you can speak and now you release words that have power into the atmosphere. And now you can impact that atmosphere. And you can cause things to change. Amen. That's why if you got a problem going on in the atmosphere or the place that you are, you need to find, get on, step outside for a minute and release something from your mouth. Come on, somebody into the atmosphere. Don't just be in the office praying. I pray these people stop acting a fool up in here. No, you need to go to the bathroom or go outside somewhere and then verbally release. You ain't got to yell. I'm going to show you this. You ain't got to be out there screaming. The atmosphere don't need you to scream to hear you. When God said, let there be light, he wasn't screaming. God didn't have to scream. People yelling and stuff, they, you don't have to. It's just it has to be a verbal release. Amen. It has to be 
a verbal release. Now, let me help you guys understand. This is not, let me just pray out loud. Amen? See, when you're praying, you're asking for something. But why are you asking for something that was promised? And so Abraham wasn't praying. He didn't have to repeat, Lord, please help me to get Sarah pregnant. No, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was fully persuaded that what God promised he was able to perform. And so when it comes to speaking those things that are not as if they were, that's not you praying out loud. Come on, man. That's not praying out loud. I don't need to pray. out. I don't. You can pray. Lord, I'm praying for healing. That's good. Pray that. But that's not a confession. So you can't say, well, pastor, I read my Bible out loud. That ain't it. That ain't what I'm talking about. Come on, somebody. You should. We on message seven. You you behind. Huh? I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about uh, praying out loud and. I'm not talking about, well, I was singing along in the, with the praise song. You was praising, but you weren't professing nothing. Amen? Amen? And so now you find out what these promises are, and then you got to speak it. Because once again, there is a sound that must be released into the atmosphere. Man, and we will start to see these things change. I'll say it again. The atmosphere does not respond to your thoughts. It responds to your words. Go to Mark 11, Mark 11, 23. These are all familiar scriptures. Easy. But the reason I keep teaching this stuff is I want it to. I don't want you to just hear a, another good sermon. Like, I don't care about good sermons. I care about results. Amen. I want to see some things manifesting. You know, my I, I speak bold things. I speak health on all of you guys. I speak now. There are certain things God's going to do just because of my faith as your pastor. But I want you to start walking in greater manifestations. There's stuff that I might not even know to speak. And God will do it for you because you've decided that you're going to apply what's being taught. Uh, Mark eleven twenty three. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall what? Say. What about meditate? Whosoever shall meditate, whosoever shall pray, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, what? Can you please leave? Can you please leave me alone? Is it any any please in there? So we're talking about uh, an authoritative command, a verbal command. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and what? Huh? Shall not doubt what? In his heart. But now this is where, what you want to understand, because people say, I believe in God. But then you got to ask yourself, do you believe in your words? You believe in God, but do you believe in your words? He says, whosoever shall say and then unto this mountain, be thou removed. That's a verbal command. But then it says, and shall not doubt in his heart, not doubt God. Sometimes people think this is doubting God or you don't have enough faith in God. No, no, no. Because God ain't saying that you are. And so and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which who says. Well, I know pastor said this or that it ain't my what I said. What did you say? But shall not see. And now you got to get into this because some t people will try to say stuff, but they don't really believe it. And the devil knows how to spot a fraud. He knows how to spot a phony. Mm -hmm. So you can say by stripes, I'm healed, but you don't really believe it. Yeah. So it's a doubt in your heart mm -hmm. and that doubt in your heart waters down the power of your words. Yeah. And so when you're in that place where you speak it and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever. Who's doing all the talking? So how did we slip into this prayer mode? But we ain't saying nothing. We're just praying. How do we slip into that? Who tricked you in that? 
See? And you got to say, oh, no, well, it's, I'm, listen, I'm not telling you you got to go stand on a mountaintop and, you know, get a megaphone and start yelling and speaking. You just got to talk. So you need to be talking, talk in the bathroom, talk uh, in your car. Talk. You got to start talking. If you're not talking, you ain't getting nothing. You're just hoping. Abraham was no longer hoping. Because he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Strong faith is going to have you speaking. It's going to have you speaking from a place of knowing that what you say. Huh? You make bold declarations. You're not hoping. Like when I told you guys, I said it. I said, I ain't getting no COVID. I ain't getting nothing. I said that before I even knew what it was. But y'all think I was playing with it? I was serious. And guess what? I I ain't got no COVID. I never got no COVID. Huh? Pastor, you don't know. I know. How do I know? Because I stagger not at the promise of God through unbelief. I'm fully persuaded that what he promised, he is able to perform. He promised me good health, and I'm going to show you how to confess this over yourself. But see, I don't play with these things. I, I don't, and, and I know this is a different kind of ministry. This is one of the ministries that, you know, sometimes gets people uncomfortable because they don't want the responsibility. They don't want to have to take on this response. Oh, man. Ah, oh, just, you know, you mean I can't even just get the flu? You can get whatever you want. I ain't telling you you can't get it. You can have anything you want. I'm just telling you, you ain't about to give it to me. Amen. You see what I'm saying? I don't avoid people that's coughing and stuff. I, it, people come here and say, oh, I don't want to give. No, give me a hug. It ain't going to. I have diplomatic immunity. Amen. I've already told you I can't get this stuff. Amen. Well, because I believe that what I say. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Now, I'm not just hoping about this. Now, it does take you some time to put these things into practice. And so I want to show you how you can you can start to implement some of these things so that you can have victory in your life. So say meaning speak. And so now you got to proactively declare the word over yourself daily. Here's that word daily. People have trouble with consistency. Except for eating. They don't have a problem with that. Seem like they know how to eat in the morning and lunch, dinner. Most people don't have problems with that. It's natural. Well, you're supposed to be to where confessing the word is natural. Come on, somebody. It is natural for you. Amen. Now, if you apply and I'm not saying you guys aren't doing this. I don't know. Prayerfully, you are. But. If what I do know is we start seeing fruit based on seed sown. And so if you're doing what I'm doing, then I, I, we, I should be expecting to see everybody healthy. Come on, somebody. I mean, uh, come on. Uh, flu, flu season, wintertime, whatever you want to call it, don't mean nothing. What that mean? Amen. What does that mean? I don't I don't call in sick. I I never called you guys to can you can y'all have somebody preach for me? <laughs> I have a job to do. Amen. So the things that I incur, try to encourage you all to do is not stuff I think about. I do it. And I get the results from what I do. Amen. And so I want to encourage you. If you start to speak it so proactively. Now, I've already explained this proactively. What is that? That's before. Don't try to do it later. That's reactive, proactive. So now you have to proactively declare. Now, remember. That declaration, that's a positive, explicit or formal statement. You've got to proactively declare the word. Over yourself daily. Amen. Now, this right here, people think this is so hard. 
but it's not. I had this Power Five Confessions that I came up with years ago. And, and, um, and the reason I call it Power Five is it only takes you five minutes. See, people, priorities are all out of whack. They, can, they will do whatever they need to do, and it takes more time than confessing the word over themselves. And you're talking about five minutes? And so I'm not going to go through all of it, but this is just some of the stuff. And I want to show you now, this is where we get into um, this activation. I always want to give you, you know, practical application, things that you can actually take and do it and develop new habit patterns. So if let's say we're talking about health, right? Well, you got to get the promises and this is just basic. So if I'm, this is how you do this. This is how you activate confessions. This is what it is. It's speaking the word over yourself. And so uh, if you want health or whatever, you say, I am healthy. See that? So you speak, I am healthy, but the devil is a legalist. Mm -hmm. And so this is not just positive affirmations. I'm not teaching you about positive affirmations. They do that in the new age movement. I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm this, I'm that, and whatever you do, uh, you can do that and you might be happy for a little while. But when I'm talking about decreeing, I'm talking about God's promises. So now this is the legal document. And so what does the legal document do? Shuts the devil down. He don't know how to get around it. And so what does that mean? You got to get to where you are confessing the legal document from your mouth. Amen. And so I am healthy. Now everybody would say, you know, we're going to I don't have no problem saying that. But then now you got to come back with the scripture. Isaiah 53, five. Just put it up there. We'll, we'll go through some of these fasts. But you can you can memorize this stuff. Now, when you memorize it, this is powerful because you can be doing your confessions when you're driving to work. You can be paying attention to the road and you confessing. I'm, I'm you know, people don't even know who you t they might think you're talking to somebody anyway in this age that we're in now. People talking on they got the, the mics in their cars and stuff. So you could just be talking back in the day. They might have thought you was crazy. So it's a little easier to do that stuff now. Amen. OK, so I just confess I'm healthy. Then I got my legal document. I got the documentation to back up my confession. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our inequities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with the stripes, we were healed. So you can just personalize it, right? I, I'm healthy, but he was wounded for my transgressions. You know, you just put yourself in there. But you take that. Now you're taking that confession, basically a bold proc, uh, a declaration. And once again, it's got to be proactive. I'm trying to wait until you're in the hospital. Talking about I'm healthy. You should have been saying that already. Now you can start, but it's going to just, I'm telling you, man, it's a little harder to believe in healing when sickness is attacking your body. It's hard. And you can, you can do it, but it's hard. You need some people praying for you because you're going to be weak. But that's why you got to do it proactively. Amen. All right. So I'm healthy. You got that that scripture. Here's another one. I am energetic. Now, when I see you got to say this to you about yourself, I think in one of these messages, I said, you know, it's about what are you speaking about yourself? I am energetic. OK, here's the scripture to back it up. Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. So here's how you do it. I am healthy. And then just read the scripture out loud. And then pretty soon you'll memorize it. See what I'm saying? I'm healthy. Boom. I'm energetic. Boom. See, you make a statement and then you put a scripture to back it. Amen. Oh, pastor, that's going to take all day. Well, how much energy you want to have? You say, I don't know how much time, you know, I don't know if I got time to do that. Well, you have time to watch your TV show. But your TV show ain't helping you. The TV show ain't giving you no energy. Matter of fact, most of them make you tired. Right? It's just people's willingness, man. It's just like we come out here on a Wednesday night. We're only out here for an hour and 15 minutes. 
How important is it? For some people, it's a lifeline. For some people, it's not. Some people, it's optional. Some people, it's like, you know what? I don't want those peas with the meal tonight. But for me, it's life or death. Amen. Amen. So the things of God are not optional to me. Because so, people do what they want to do. Amen. And that's why I said you got to you got to decide you're going to win. You decide you're going to win. God's going to give you the things that will help you win and stay in victory. And so I am energetic. I say, man, it seems like I'm all tired all the time. Well, did you, I gave you a confession. I am energetic. Don't do that when you're tired. Come on. That's not proactive. You do it when you're tired. You're trying to get energy. Well, you get to confessing this, then you'll be able to keep energy. Amen. And you got the scripture to back it up. Um, here's another one. I am living long and strong. How many of y'all be willing to say this stuff about yourself? You, you have to. I am living long and strong. OK, here's the scripture. Back it up. Genesis 6, 3. Let's put that up there. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that. He is also flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. So there it is, the legal document. Y'all in here with me? It's backing it up. Why? Because the devil is a legalist. Oh, people can get cliches, but can they quote word? Come on. You can say some cliches, but can you quote word? Yeah. Pastor, I'm not I'm I'm not that sharp in it. Well, get sharp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? I'm, I'm telling you, man, this is you can do it. All right. Here's another one. Now you're backing up your statement. I am living long and strong. You got to say it. You know what I'm saying? This like I, I, I share with you guys. I said COVID won't touch me. And all, I said all this stuff. But you know what? Matter of fact, when I when it first came out, I didn't know what it was. And I was speaking so strong against it. And I established the fact that it wasn't going to touch anybody. And it didn't touch anybody for the first year. But then the second year came, people start getting comfortable and they they didn't realize. See, because people, they'll fight against something if they think they're going to die. And so when COVID first came out, people was like, ah, it was afraid. And so it didn't touch, you know, nobody in here got it. But year two, people start popping up with COVID. What does that mean? They let their guards down. And they started to accept something. I never let my wife knows. I never let my guards down. It was still I, I was on high alert the whole time. I'm still on high alert. I'm still on high alert. Amen. So I'm just showing you these are things you can do. Don't let the devil cause you to be relaxed. Stay on it. He'll because he'll try to get you to be relaxed and then he'll creep up on you. And so if you're saying I'm living long and strong, you're decreeing it. That's a proactive declaration. Y'all got it? Yeah. I'm living long and strong. What is that? A proactive declaration. You're not trying to say that when you're on your deathbed. You're saying that to keep you off the deathbed. Amen. And so you got the scripture, Genesis 6, 3. The years of man are 120. Now, here's another one. Deuteronomy 34, 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. So uh, another one of them versions says he was as strong as ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so think about that. God is no respecter of persons. So if. Moses was 120 years old and he was as strong as ever. Then guess what? I can be as strong as ever Amen. at 120 years old. Amen. Amen. But I can't wait till I get, you know, to 90 to start confessing this. Right. You're going to be behind the eight ball. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got to start doing it ahead of time. And then here's another one for long life. I'm once again, this is a proactive declaration. I am living long and strong. All right. Here's another one to validate your statement, because you know what the devil will do? Prove it. 
And the only way to prove anything to the devil is to release the word. That's it. Okay, so next scripture is Psalm 91, 16. Let's go 16 first and then we'll back up to those. 91, 16. He says, um, this is his, his promise. He says, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And so I can claim that long life. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And so that's what uh, Psalm 91, 16 says. Um, you can just, that's fine. You can just leave it there because I'm going to go, I'm moving into nine now. So now we'll use this one. So you guys make a note of that 9116. With well, long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So that backs up your proactive declaration. Now, here's another one. I am protected. I am protected. What is that? A proactive declaration. Amen. See, I'm confessing the word. I am protected. Well, Psalm 91, 9 through 12, because uh, because he is made because I was made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. So now I'm just quoting it from I'm going faster than this thing. You, you see what I'm saying? I'm. Because I'm, I'm above this technology because it's my confession. So I don't care what, you know, if this machine is slow. I'm going to just share it with you from my heart. Well, I do this. I don't, I'm not like, I, I don't just say that this is whatever. But now you've got to have a proactive declaration, not reactive. Oh, seem like. We about to be attacked. Well, if you've been confessing this, you know you can't be attacked. Mm -hmm. If somebody trying to attack you, they better be ready to deal with these angels. You see what I'm saying? Y'all getting this? And so now let's go to another one. Uh, I am fearless. These are all proactive declarations. I am fearless. Now, here's the scripture. Second Timothy one seven. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and of a sound mind. Y'all in here with me? So I could say, I am fearless. Why? Because God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Y'all in here with me? All right. Uh, here's another one dealing with fear. Isaiah 41.10, NLT. This is reminding you, don't be afraid. For I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Y'all seeing how this works? And so this continues. And there's so much more. I'm just going to have to, I'll share more of these scriptures. But I'm, I'm showing you guys how this works. See, you have to be in that place in your life where you're going to believe what Mark 11, 23 and 24 says about you believe that what you say is going to come to pass. Well, then now you have a uh, proactive declaration. If you said I'm healed, then you got to believe it. Come on, somebody. If you said uh, I'm protected, then you got to believe it. Then get the scripture to back it up. But don't just meditate it. Say it. Amen. And then you'll be bold, man. The righteous are as bold as a lion. So that, that Proverbs 28, 1, you'll be bold as a lion and you'll be confessing stuff. And in your mind, you will not consider. Y'all in here with me. You will not consider. These things that are outside of the promises of God happening. See, because Abraham considered not his own body. And so. He considered not the things that made it impossible. So you cannot consider the things that uh, are opposite of what you spoke. Amen. So you cannot speak that my God shall supply all of my needs. Come on, somebody. You could be speaking like Paul said in Philippians 4, 18. He says, I have all and abound. 
And so you can't say I have all and abound. And then in the next verse, verse 19, say, but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And then in the next breath, prepare yourself to do without. You just said that God's going to supply all your needs, but now you're preparing to do without. So you don't believe what you just said. Y'all in here with me. That's why I never prepared to protect myself against COVID. I wasn't getting it. I didn't need no vaccine. I don't need no mask. I don't need no gloves. I don't need nothing. Amen. I don't need to avoid people. I don't need to avoid anything. That's what you, you see what I'm saying. That's just one example. Now, my goal is to help you. Step your game up. To where you believe it. And see, I, I, I don't have like where I am in my life because I obey God. See, when you obey God, you don't have these question marks. Amen. People got question marks because they're not obeying God. See, if you're obedient with God and your finances, you'll never have a thought Oh, y'all, I'm going to close this message. You'll never have a thought of doing of of being in lack. How It's not. It's like you will start to say it's impossible. It's impossible for me to be in lack. I'm a tither. I can never, ever go without. God would have to send it. Come on, somebody. He would have to send birds with bags of money to my house. Why? Because he cannot lie. See, but it's the word is like this on everything. Amen. And so I know it's, you know, Wednesday and I said we're going we only stay till like 815. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. But, you know, I could be teaching you now. What I want is I want you guys to start applying this. Start applying this stuff. Start saying, OK, OK, I'm going to give me some scriptures. Matter of fact, I think uh, Elder Patsy put some promise books out there, but. These promise books are just the scripture. Get in there, man. Find you some. You believe in God for something? Get the word on it and then say it. If you need healing in your body, say, I'm by stripes, I'm healed. OK. Decree it. I'm healed. Then say, by stripes, I'm healed. That's the legal document. But read it out. Amen. That way you get yourself going in this thing and we start having more, more. I'm telling you. I know that I'm speaking from the spirit. There's too many quiet Christians. We are quiet in a fight that is won by words. So if you're quiet in a fight that's won by words, what's happening to you? You're getting beat up. Amen. So let's change the tide and let's start releasing power from our mouths. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Amen. Well, let's close in prayer. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you, Lord, for sharing your word with us. We thank you for giving us the authority to release your word from our mouths. I thank you, Lord, that we can release proactive declarations over our lives. We don't have to wait on anyone to come speak a word over us. We can speak our own word. We have the power to prophesy into our own future. And we thank you, Lord, that what we say is going to come to pass. We trust you and we believe that the best is yet ahead. Maybe you're watching us right now and you don't know Jesus as Lord. We want to invite you in. We want to give you that opportunity to receive everything that he has for you. Jesus stands at the door and he knocks and he says, if anyone would open, he would come in, meaning he's going to come into your life, not for a visit, but he's going to dine with you. He's going to stay with you. That's Revelation 3.20. He's going to come into your life and your life will get better. But you've got to open your heart and let him in. Church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message they will know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me 
with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's stand to our feet. Let's get ready to walk out of here in power. Amen. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, we just thank you. We love you. We honor you. I thank you for everyone that is here and everyone that is listening online. I ask that you release your power into their lives. I, re I ask in the name of Jesus that you activate that voice that you place in them and that they would boldly profess your truth over their lives every day. We thank you for keeping us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Amen.